Welcome to the Pickleball Recovery Podcast, where we highlight products and practices to help you feel better faster, so you can spend less time stiff, sore, and injured, and more time on the court doing what you love. This podcast is sponsored by AlloMD. Don't just mask pain, eliminate it. AlloMD provides intense relief and advances continual repair for both acute injuries and chronic pain. All natural patented technology developed by doctors to get you back in the game fast without the use of opioids, steroids, or ANSAIDs. AlloMD, harnessing the power of pure natural ingredients that provide deep, penetrating repair. Patented, validated, natural. Learn more at www.allomd.com and make sure to use the discount code PBR at checkout to save $5 off your order. What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Pickleball Recovery. I'm your host, Tim Ringgold. How you doing? Did you play any pickleball today? I hope so. Hope you're out there enjoying the summer, uh, playing wherever you can, whenever that works for you. Um, I am taking time off right now still, and uh, will continue to do so um, for who knows how long it'll take. That's the thing about recovering from injuries, right? This head injury has been... Uh, more complex than I thought it was going to be. I kind of had like a, a leveling up, if you will, uh, about eight weeks into the rehab. Um, but then I kind of plateaued and found that my legs, uh, had atrophied quite a bit during those eight weeks. And, uh, yeah, I'll probably tell you more about that story, uh, in a future episode. I'll keep you posted on what's going on there, uh, because we're all on our own kind of, you know, journey here. But I want to get into this episode. And before I do, I just want to say, hey, listen, have you been over to pickleballrecovery.com? Have you taken advantage of any of the discounts that are over there? I mean, we all use recovery products, braces, powders, supplements, electrolytes, creams, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, Why pay full price for anything? (laughs) That's my question. So over at pickleballrecovery.com, you'll see lots of the products I have uh, a unique discount on them if you use the PBR code. So go check that out, would you? Um, that would mean a lot because I get a tiny uh, sliver of that, get a small commission on the sales of the things that there are discounts on, uh, or if you see there's a code there. Uh, and that helps me to cover the cost of maintaining that website and this podcast because they do cost money. Uh, not just time. There's a real cost in this every month to put this on and put out this information that's, you know, zero cost to you, uh, but there is a cost to me. So, you know, that's a great way that you can kind of pay back uh, in some small way uh, by going ahead and taking advantage of getting some discounts on products that will help you uh, feel better faster on the court. But today's interview is just like, where here we go down the rabbit hole. Uh, we were going to be talking with my chiropractor, Dr. Ken Cooper, uh, who his team has been instrumental in me recovering from this uh, concussion that I got back in May, uh, number 21. It's been rough. I'm not going to lie. Had to deal with a lot of intense side effects from it because of the history I have with them. And his team has, man, they, he has covered or uncovered things like treated me in ways that I've never been treated for a concussion. I would never think that a chiropractor could do as many different things as a chiropractor as this chiropractor does. And I want you to hear about con- the conversation specifically around concussion because concussion is so misunderstood by the public. Uh, and I've learned that along my own journey. And so you're going to want to hear what he has to say, because if you've ever had your bell rung, you've had a concussion and concussion, believe it or not, leads to tremendous increases in risk for injury in other orthopedic joints. Yeah, I didn't know that. So uh, you're going to want to hear what he has to say. It's pretty interesting. So with that, let's jump right in. Listen to Dr. Ken Cooper from Cooperstown Chiropractic and sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. And I'll see you on the other side. Dr. Ken Cooper, thanks for joining me on Pickleball Recovery. Pickleball Recovery. I'm happy to be here. (laughs) So great. I'm so happy to be here too, because ever since I've been here, Mm -hmm. things have been getting better for me. And so I'm really excited to bring you onto the podcast. 
a lot of the setup of this whole podcast is me as the guinea pig, if you will, on my journey uh, as an athlete. Right. And what works. And anytime something works, it ends up on the pod. That's a smart move. You know, um, because I, and maybe you, this has been your journey as an athlete. Like when something hurts, someone else often says, Oh, I had that. Have you tried this? Right. And you're like, either yes or no. Right. So for me, I say from pain to purpose. Pain to purpose. Right. So, you know, everything that seems to happen professionally started as a problem, as a pain that we needed to correct. And then that drove us into purpose. And then that drove us to solutions and, you know, brought forth what we're delivering. Yeah. So you started out as a pretty high level athlete yourself, telling me some stories, kind of found yourself in some pretty big ballparks. Yeah. So uh, just give us a little bit of a a backstory on you as the athlete. Honestly, I would have to say now that I contemplate on that, my athletic background was cool. However, I was never going to get to greatness. Okay. At that level. Got it. So it was very clear that my greatness existed somewhere else. And so thank you, God, for knowing the difference and helping guide me to what, you know, my my reality is. But, yeah, we're called Cooperstown. Cooperstown is a baseball hall of fame because, yep. you know, I was able to play and able to get pretty far. But, you know, the problem is, is like, if I, I'd hit the ball, I have to run out to where it landed and run, you know, hit it again to hit as far as all those guys could hit. So I knew there was like a limited amount of days. There you go. So that's all right. And honestly, I thought both of my sons were going to be baseball players as well. But then my son, Scotty, that, you know, yep. um, in his junior year, sophomore year in high school, he was rated number 20 in the nation in long snapping. And oh, I was that's like, so specific. holy moly, that kid, huh. that's that's going to pay for an education, <laughs> right? So, Cha-ching. exactly. <laughs> so, you know, when, when you're playing baseball and you have a scholarship, yeah, they cover your books, you know. So, yes. but when you, you know, football team has to have a long snapper. Yes, it does. You know. That's so funny. And yep. not all sports scholarships are created equally, ladies yep. and gentlemen. Let's just say. I remember I played rugby <clears throat> rugby in college, and I remember being at a university on a Saturday, mm-hmm. playing a match on a field somewhere off in, you know, on the campus, way out in the ex- outskirts. Yeah, maybe 100 people lining the field. Cool. Yeah. And then I went to a small liberal arts school. We didn't have a football program. And so as we were, like, walking to wherever the party was going to be that was being hosted by our host team, right. I hear what sounds like the Coliseum, you know, like there's this roar, Yeah. but it was like at a level that like, I didn't know anything about and I'd never heard, but it like gave me goosebumps. I was like, what is that sound? And then I realized this is what it's like to play football, not (laughs) rugby. (laughs) Quite a few more people go to watch football. Yeah. (laughs) Than baseball or rugby Yeah. or probably any other college sport. I don't know. Basketball probably gets a strong second. But, yeah. Uh, well, even my boys high school, which was Servite High School okay. that's here in yep. Southern California. Yeah, they a, a poor game would have 5,000 fans. <sighs> yeah. So they, they it, it is pretty incredible to have that ability to play in front of that. That's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think if I've played in front of 5,000 people collectively. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. In, but, a, in minor league baseball, you play in front of your family. Okay. Sometimes your wife comes. Yes. Depends if the kids are, you know, behaving or not. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's all good. That could go either way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Great. All right. Well, I appreciate your humility. Uh, but for what it's worth, you guys, uh, Dr. Ken here was talking about this day that he was in the tunnels of just this small little rinky dink place. I think it was, oh, uh, Yankee Stadium. Yankee Stadium. Yankee Stadium. So, like, listen, not everybody finds their way into those tunnels underneath Yankee Stadium if it's not a tour day. Yeah. So I just wanted to say kudos for, you know, the journey you went on because you got to find yourself in some pretty cool places. I, I agree with that. Yeah.
I agree with that. Cool. And then at some point, you know, you said pain to purpose. I love that phrase. Right. Um, was there a moment for you along the way where that happened as an athlete to find your way into chiropractic? Like, how'd well, you, how'd you yes. connect the dots? So I, I found my way in chiropractic in that I was playing baseball uh, in college at Cal State Fullerton. Okay. And I got hurt. Right. <clears throat> and when I got hurt, I went to the trainer, went to the team doctor, they sent me to the neurologist. The neurologist said that this excruciating pain where I could barely move for like six weeks um, was because I was under too much stress. Hmm. I was like, okay, I have like zero stress in my life. <laughs> right. And leaving that place, I mean, I was just so disheartened. And my, my dad had asked me, he said, you know what? I would like for you to go see a chiropractor. Hmm. And in all honesty, I knew nothing about it. Okay. As a matter of fact, I might even say I was probably the most bigoted person that I've ever met. Because back then, you know, the question was, you know, chiropractor, is that a real doctor? Right. Right. right sure. So I, I didn't know anything. But I went on a Monday. I was examined on Monday. It was adjusted on Tuesday. And on Friday, I was back on the field. Okay. Yeah. And, and like we're talking about prior to that, like a, a flight of stairs took like a half an hour to go up. What? Yeah. It was terrible. And how old were you at this point? Probably 22. College athlete. Yeah, college athlete. Wow. So. That's a big transformation. Yeah. So, huh. you know, at that point I, I went to my advisor at Cal State Fullerton and I told him, I said, I had this miracle with chiropractic. Oh, get this. You appreciate this. So I told him I have this, I had this miracle with chiropractic. I'm not going to go to medical school. I'm going to go to chiropractic school. And he goes, we'll take care of it. But, you know, and his his team and his secretary and his assistants, I mean, they really help students out. And, yep. I mean, they named a whole building after this guy. Wow. Right? okay. All right, Dr. McCarthy. All right. Anyways, the whole time we're talking, he's checking his watch. And I was like, thinking to myself, you know, in the four years I've been here, he's never done that. Okay. So I called him on it. I okay. Go, hey, Doc, you know what? It didn't matter if the president of the university was out your door. I've never seen you do that. And he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. I have an adjustment scheduled at four. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, gosh, if that's not God's way of confirming, <laughs> right, that this is the right choice. <laughs> that's comedy. It is. But I, I knew about, you know, I experienced that miracle and I instantly knew I could do this for other people. Mm. And so that's that's kind of where it all evolved from. Yep. So yep. the pain to purpose part, yes, I had um, my son that played, you know, high school, and both of my sons played high school football. Yep. My youngest son, both of them played college football. My youngest son also wrestled. But it was my daughter that ended up with a concussion. Oh. And she was in dance and they were doing like a like a throw with a person and that person as they came down they missed their mark and hit her in the head oh. and that's what it was and Got then <clears throat> we thought we had it resolved but then one day at home she stood up when the cabinet was open and she hit her head and it was just that little minuscule impact that just was the game changer and i knew at that point i needed to fix this i needed to figure this out mm. so you know i had a lot of experience and um i luckily surround myself with the right people yep you know that gave me the information and gave me the research and and really uh, the, the bottom line to it was that the research that i took was so robust i mean 43 pages of enormously robust research that only the guys that were on that that team and writers, authors of that research, are really literally able to do it. Yep. And so it was my task, and I was tasked to like make that to where any provider can mm. can do it. Got it. And so I kind of thought of this way, you know, like they could probably discuss the metallurgy of a hammer. Yes. And I don't really need to know that. I just need to know how to drive the nail. 100%. You know? Yes. So <clears throat> that yep. was that was where um, all of that came out of. Got it. You know? Wow. And, and the remarkable experiences and the remarkable amount of athletes, you know, from professional NFL players to women, um, you know, professional women's basketball players to um, um, drag players. Drag racers. Okay. Um, to now pickleball now players. Now professional pickleball players. Right. 
Yeah, it's cool. And and the thing is, is that we we service not just the professional athlete. We just right. service everybody because it's such an epidemic. Yeah. And see, this is one of the things people don't really understand. They don't understand what an epidemic it is. Mm. Well, we looked at some statistics. The CDC said in 2020, 6.8% of children under 17, boys and girls, suffered a concussion or a mild traumatic brain injury. You look at the census and make that multiplication, that's 5 million people. Wow. Right? Yeah. So we know also that 3 million adults over 65 go to the ER because they fell. Yep. Now, 600,000 of them specifically hit their head. But what we understand is like you're not going to fall and not be jarring yep. that brain inside the cranium. Absolutely. Right. So that's another 3 million. And then 4 million athletes, wow. professional athletes, college athletes. A year. So, I mean, that's 33,000 people a day. That's how huge that is. That's amazing. So you can see where, you know, like pain to purpose, the purpose really comes because, I mean, there's so many people that are suffering and there's so many people that, you know, they'll, that'll come and they'll say things like, yeah, Dr. Coop. Um, by the way, everybody calls me Coop. Um, they go, hey, Dr. Coop, you know, I, I tore my ACL. And our question is always, when was your concussion? Because, I mean, get this. There's a 400% increased likelihood of tearing an ACL after concussion. Oh, I, you don't have to. I believe that. I hyperextended my left knee the second day I went out to play pickleball eight weeks after my concussion. Yep. And I have never hyperextended my knee on yep. pickleball court ever. Right. I mean, it was so alarming. Yeah. Like that my the circuitry wasn't working properly no i tripped uh right. for those of you i tripped trying to do an ernie i was on the left and i went to do an ernie and i tripped and i fell flat smack bashed up my handle of my paddle hands belly out right in front of everybody i don't trip like i don't i'm not no. that guy like i'm 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 really a cat on the court right fell twice in two, in one night and i was just like What's going on? Mm -hmm. The circuitry is like not not working properly. Right. Well, see, and that's a that's kind of an interesting thought because when you think about the vestibular system that yep. tells you where you are in space, yes. you know, prior to that, you know, you let's take like the football athlete. You know, he's able to run that pattern. He's able to look over his left shoulder at a certain time and yep. know where that ball is yep. and be able to get it. And now you're asking after you've disrupted that system that it's going to be able to do that same thing, know where you are in space, then land appropriately. Right. Yeah. That's just an impossibility. Yeah. Yeah. When I went back to my first tournament, uh, just to watch and to go say hi to my sponsor, yeah. I couldn't track the ball on center court without getting nauseous, just trying to track it through space and time. My eyes just couldn't. Yeah. And then when Dr. Uh, Dr. Angelique was, was working on me, um, we realized my, one of my eyes wasn't working properly. Right. I would have never known that. Right. Like it was, I, I had no idea yeah. that that was an issue and, but I'm dizzy. Right. And I'm, you know, I got headaches. I wake up hungover. Oh, and I go out and I can't even watch the ball without getting nauseous. Right. And she's like, yeah, your left eye just, it just lags. You're behind your right eye. So we need to address that. And right. like, man, I I have been exposed to a lot of different treatment modalities because this was number right. concussion number twenty one. That's crazy, and no one had ever checked my eye tracking. Yeah, so in the research, the 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 research says the eye tracking is the key to recovery. Wow, absolutely. But here's the manifestation. Here here's really where that scary thing is. When your eyes don't track appropriately and don't track in, in symmetry, yep. then your brain has to put in what it believes should be there, but it may not be there. Oh. So it's here's like the filling scenario. Filling in the blanks. Filling in the blanks. Ooh. So here we got the lady in the left turn lane. She sees everything clear, but her eyes are doing the saccade, this odd <laughs> movement. Yeah. She makes the turn, and then halfway through the turn, she gets T-boned. Because she never actually saw the car coming. Yeah. You know, the running back yeah. that grabs the ball, goes through the hole, never even sees the guy Blinds coming it. and gets blindsided. Absolutely. Yep. Right. And, and over and over and over. Wow. And so we see that after concussion, 
that person has a 400% increase in any kind of musculoskeletal injuries. They are most commonly the ACL or the shoulder labrum. So I had the wonderful opportunity to, to have an interview with the most decorated military officer that's alive right now. Okay. Right? Wow. And yeah. And it that's was a stud? A, yeah, the total stud. And he actually flew a helicopter called a Little Bird. Okay. So it was a tiny little helicopter. But what he was saying is that, you know, and he went on like well over 100 missions. Okay. He says, you, you wear this helmet, but you got this night vision in the front and you got this battery in the back. He says, so imagine this helmet weighing like 16 to 18 pounds. Ugh. And he goes, but when you're out in the field, you don't land the way you watch helicopters land around here because you're a sitting duck. So right. you come and you Bang. bounce. And he goes, and that, that impact oh, yeah. is just so impactful. And he goes, yeah, many times like you'd hit that, and, you know, you'd be a little woozy afterwards. And then I said to him, I said, you know, there's a 400% increased likelihood of you damaging your knees and your, your, the labor of my shoulders. And there was a little pause. And he goes, yeah, I've had both knees done and I've had both shoulders done. So that's amazing because I have had both knees done uh, and I am currently struggling with what I would call a labrum tear because it's been eight weeks. Yeah. And if I move the wrong way quickly, it's as fresh. Yeah. The pain is deep and it's <clears throat> sharp and it's specific. Yep. And it's not the muscles. They've had plenty of time. Right. And so as I've been doing my own, you know, homework, I've been like, eh, I think that's what's where it is. Yeah. And that's zero percent surprising to me now. Yeah, well, that's what happens. <laughs> Throw it on the but, pile. But, it, but but it's those odd things that happen that people just are unaware of that they don't tie into the concussion. Right, right. That's it. They don't make the connection. They don't connect right. those dots. That the one is related to the other. Right. Would you? I mean, would it shock you to find out that? Have you ever heard of IBS? Irritable, irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. Huge percentage of irritable bowel syndrome starts as a concussion. What? Because the very first thing that happens is is gut dysregulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right? that's what my ND was just as we were talking off screen. Yeah, that's one of the things she was talking about was my gut dysregulation. Yeah. Since this industry, she's like, whoop. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Okay, right. So that's just another one. Fascinating. You know, like immune challenges. So we find people, even children, like with a fever, like unexplained fevers, right. on and off. Or prolonged illness. They yep. get sick or, you know, an adult gets sick and then they're sick for a long period of time. Yep. Right. Just, just really challenge recovery. That's all screams concussion. Wow. You know, psychological changes, behavioral changes. Yeah. Those anger episodes. Yep. Whew. Yeah. I watched that with my own son. My youngest son had a concussion at like one of the last days of practice this past <sighs> year. It was terrible. And he was so upset. You know, we took him off the field. We mm -hmm. took him out mm -hmm. of the stadium and mm -hmm. off to the side a little bit. He literally ripped his gloves. Not, not, not took them off, but he shredded them. It wow. was, yeah. I mean, it was crazy to watch. Yeah. And I was like, oh man. Yeah. You know. Yeah. This guy, this that, just inability in, to yes. inhibit the That's anger. Right. That dysregulation. Exactly. Happened to me on the plane. I. So for those who don't know the story, uh, really rough landing at John Wayne Airport here in Orange County. It's a very unique airport. My neck compressed, my head compressed. Zzz, I felt it instantly. Tried to get off the plane. I'm all suck it up. I'm fine. Legs gave out by the time I got to first class. I fell into a seat and started sobbing. I was crying under uncontrollably, suddenly out of the blue, in this seat, holding my head in the fetal position. And I'm like, I'm a grown man who's on his way home from a business trip, dressed, holding myself like a baby, sobbing. It's 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Something's not right. Right. And it was like, and then they took me in a wheelchair up the ramp. I couldn't manage the, just turning the wheelchair, like that vestibular motion. Right. I almost threw up. We get to the top of the jetway and I'm in the wheelchair sobbing like someone had just died. While everyone's getting on the next flight in front of me, I'm just out on display. Yeah. And it was like, luckily I'm old enough to not be embarrassed at this point because I know nobody cares and I didn't know anybody. They don't know me. Right. But my system was, you know. Jacked. Jacked. Yeah. Like I'm sobbing. Like why am I sobbing? Like I right. couldn't, I, I could observe it was happening, but I couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. Weird. 
It's like coming out of anesthesia. It's like when you're all just like not working, right? Discombobulated. Yeah. So I got a phone call soon after that or a text from my sister. Okay. Who was one of your professors when oh, you were yeah. back in yeah, school. Let's, let's connect the dots. Yes. yes. And she said to me, she said, one of my favorite students of all time. Oh, um, stop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> had a terrible concussion and he's suffering and I really need you to talk to him. Oh, and so I don't remember if I reached out to you or you reached out to me. I that part's a little hazy to me. Yeah. But yeah, I she, remember she I, texted <clears throat> me out of the blue. Yeah. And I hadn't heard from her in like it's been fifteen years. You know, yeah. like it was a long time. So I was like, Whoa, Kathy, okay. She said, Call me. Yeah. Call me immediately. I'll call Kathy. Like I don't call everybody, right. but Kathy gets a phone call. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, how are you? Yeah. You know, my brother is a chiropractor and is an expert in concussion you need to see him you need to talk to him i'm going to text you his phone number you're going to call him <laughs> okay that's my sister that's, hey, she's really clear she's up front she's boom. like hey this is what you're going to do she did not waste a word no and a few minutes later you and i were on the phone yeah. and you were incredibly generous with your time and your attention and then before you know it here i was in yeah. your office yeah and the rest is history, yeah. as they say. Well, and our history is going to get better and better it, and better. It's getting better and better and better. Right. And it's been amazing, the whole journey. And one of the things that I was so impressed with was that, and I've been talking with a couple of other brain injury surviving friends uh, about, you know, there are so many different healing modalities. And, and it's really not about one thing. It's about, like, the alchemy of a multimodal interdisciplinary approach to it. You know, yep. like this is going to hit it from this side. This is going to get it from here. This is going to help here. Oh, this is going to nudge it from right. here. And one of the things that impressed me about your protocol and the reason I came to you yeah. was that you were like light years beyond, I'm going to adjust you. Yeah. And that's going to be, that's going to suffice. Right. That's going to help. Right. But there's, that's not, there's that's, more to it. There's more to it. Right. So I want to kind of, I want you to kind of share, because for me, that's your genius, is putting the multiple things that you've found together that have caused this alchemic response in me. Because after I started seeing you, you know, we started doing the work, doing the work, doing the work, and then we did the nutrition. And then, like, the hockey stick, you know, right. like, immediately there was, like, this sudden bloop. And I told my wife uh, last week, I said, there's a part of my circuitry that was offline for the first eight weeks. Mm -hmm. I was sleepwalking at a certain part of, at a certain level of consciousness. I was, right. I know I was everywhere I was, but it, I was also not everywhere I was. The, the ebullient, exuberant, right. fun, playful Tim. Yeah. He was offline. Right. And for the first several, for the first month and a half that I walked in here, I was scowling because I was, you know, right. just trying to get through it. And I remember the difference uh, of being then walking in and being like, Hey Coop. Yeah. How's it going? <laughs> exactly. And, and I feel restored yeah. back to this buoyant person that is just a big kid. Yeah. You know, I'm really an eight year old getting away with adulting. That's nice. That is exactly what's happening. So let's kind of talk about how did you come to set up shop with like, not just we're going to do this, but this nutrition piece is so important. Again, it came from pain to purpose. Okay. So the thing is I am a great chiropractor. I am excellent at what I do. Right. Um, and, and, you know, I'm just clear to tell you that yep. that's what I'm great at. Now, what I suck at, I don't do it. Somebody else does it for me because I suck at it. There you go. And thank God there's accountants in this world. <laughs> I suck at that. Uh, amen right? to that. Yes. <clears throat> so with my own daughter, I, I needed to know that I could find, you know, a greater level of solution. Yeah. And so what, with my wife teaching neurology, so she's, Okay. Teaches speech therapist neurology at uh, Cal State Fullerton and also Chapman University. Okay. Um, you know, we could have these kind of geeky neuro yes. conversations. Yes. And really what we started talking about was, you know, the brain's neuroplasticity. Yes. And so it's the ability to heal. And how do we, what, you know, what's going to be the best way to maneuver through that and make that happen and force guide it but force it to to play through yeah. and we realized that using the cold laser was probably the most brilliant way okay because we could restore mitochondria almost instantaneously got it right so um then what we had to do is we had to figure out well 
how could we identify exactly where these this injury was and ensure that we corrected it? And that's when we added the cranial nerve work and the cranial nerve test because there's 12 nerves that just don't go in the spine. Got it. And so and they they go in very specific pathways. So what we realized is that if we could use our tools to actually correct those pathways, then we could functionally watch a person change. Mm. So it was interesting because a colleague of mine brought his son here yesterday. Son's a hockey player, had okay. bad concussion. Yep. And he's a phenomenal body worker when it comes to, you know, uh, musculoskeletal things. Yep. But he just needed some help when yep. it came to this neurological stuff. And so his one question for me was like, well, what's the, is there any objective outcome? And I said, yes. And he goes, well, what's that going to be? And I go, well, you're going to sit here and watch this. Because like, for instance, we talked about like the eye movement when we looked at his eye movement and he would have these different yes. saccades, yep. which means like that kind of jittery yep. eye movement. Yep. He watched, because I made him help me. Nice. Right. right. So he was, he was, he was the doing one, the pen. He was doing the pen, okay, right? Okay, okay. And so, and I was the one making corrections and he was like, oh my gosh, he goes, this is incredible. He could see it happening. Yeah, so time. I texted the son <clears throat> that night afterwards and I said, hey, you know, this is Dr. Cooper, just want to check on you. And I said, you, you, a couple of things are going to happen. Don't be surprised if you fall asleep in your sleep all day long. Don't be surprised if your bowels don't, you don't have like the biggest bowel movement. Because again, yep. the opposite of fight or flight, which right. is the sympathetic dominant response, yep. is, is the parasympathetic response, rest and digest. Right. So when you rest, I mean, you rest, you recover. Yep. And when you digest, you know, again, you recover. Yes. So yeah, he, today he's like, yeah, I don't know how you knew that, but he goes, <laughs> I, I went home at like, we were done maybe at about 1130. He's like, yeah, I fell asleep. I woke up, I ate dinner, and I went back to sleep. I went to sleep at 8 o'clock, and I woke up this morning at like 8 a.m. Wow. So, yeah. and I said, and the big bowel movement. And the rest? And he's like, of course. He's like, yeah. 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 So, I mean, it was really cool, um, you know, for him to have that experience. Yes. But you're right. There was just more. So, once I once I was given this research, so a colleague of mine that's in a mastermind group of mine was one of the authors of that super robust robust okay. research. And, okay. and he and I were having a conversation about um, concussion. And he said, you know what? He said, you need to look at our stuff. Mm. And he said, but, you know, the challenge is there's only like eight guys in, in the world that could do it. Yep. And I said, well, I, will, number one, want to do it. Yep. And number two, you know, I realized, hey, with uh, understanding the epidemic, part of it and that was an interesting thing because one of my executive team had a real close tie to the military mm. and in conversation now i wasn't in this conversation i'm getting it second hand okay but in this conversation at that time the admiral that was in charge of the u.s navy asked her what she's up to and she told him about our program and she was elaborating about our success and he said to her you know, I need this for every special forces guy I got. And then a little while later, he goes, I need this for every pilot I've got. Right. And so at that moment, when, when she brought that information back to me, I realized that's 8,000 guys. Right. Right. So, you know, we go from, you know, adjusting and caring for like 450, uh, 450 people a week. Yeah. The 8,000. Right. On a one day. Right. I was like, okay, I am severely outmanned. Yes. So, you know, at that moment I had to make choices and the choices was, well, do I build a team that can all do this? And the answer to that was yes. And then number two, should I incorporate other people to be able to do this as well? Yep. And the answer to that was absolutely yes. Yeah. So got a scale. Yeah. So we got a scale and that's really what we did. So we, we, we created a, a third entity, you know, our first entity is, is Cooperstown yep. Chiropractic. Our second yep. is our nonprofit that we work hand in hand with called the Coop Foundation. Oh, cool. I don't know if you know about that. No, I don't know anything about and, Coop and Foundation. The yet. Coop Foundation is super cool um, because every year what we do is we'll find, you know, families that are in need around the holidays. Yep. We'll interview them. We'll find out what they want, what they need. And then we have people that will volunteer and they'll go shop. We spend minimally $100 a child. Nice. But sometimes like double triple that yeah um 
And, you know, the, the thing is, when you become well, you have an understanding that there's other people that aren't at the same space you're in and maybe yep. don't have that ability. So now it's your responsibility to to guide them and help them get to that space. Yeah. And so that's that's our event. Nice. So, yeah, it's called the Coop, Coop Foundation. You'd think, well, that's, you know, it's his name, but it stands for the care of other people. I like it. Well done. I am a nice. sucker for an acronym. Exactly. Yep. So, um, so then, uh, this then the most third entity is concussion CPR. Okay. Yep. So uh, that's that's where we teach other doctors how to do this work, this protocol. You know, and so then that's what I would say is that you know for people that are on your podcast, you know, if you're in another state and this is an issue for you, you yep. know, what you need to talk to your doc and say, hey, you know what? Have you looked into concussion CPR? Yep. Because it's a virtual online training course. Nice. You know, all of the support we give, all the support. You know, yep. for complete implementation. Yep. And then your doc can learn and do what I can do. Yep. And then that just means more lives that are saved. Oh, 100%. I totally, that all makes sense to me in my clinical practice, you know, yeah. doing the same thing uh, with the method that I kind of created from my own work and then teaching other people. Yeah. Go do it. And now, you know, there's 10 people all around the country today who are yeah. implementing that in groups that I'll never be in. Yeah. And like, yes. You so know. in that too, we do have that person. Like I was in conversation with the person today. Um, and and we, we in the office, we call them fly-ins. Okay. And people will literally fly in from another place. So this family has a daughter in uh, Florida. And so she's going to fly in and she was asking, what's the name of that hotel and what's the name of that hotel? Because, you know, she yep. wants, wants to know where to stay. Yeah, yeah. And, and literally they'll fly in, stay either a Marriott or a Doubletree. There you go. And um, <clears throat> they'll be here for four days. Okay. And then we'll do all the stuff you and I did. Yep. And, and, and they'll get to do the other part that you haven't done yet, the Best. emotional part. That's right. Yeah. Best stands for bioenergetic synchronization technique. Yep. And um, it's a phenomenal. There's there's learning m many facets to that. We use the neuroemotional link to mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's brilliant. Yeah. And and you know what it does is it's able to help us clear garbage that's in the subconscious mind. Yes. So all of those things, like when this happens, there are these neurological triggers that you reset. Like you said, you sat there in a chair, you know, bawling. Mm -hmm. And and there's these neurological triggers, and we have to identify those. We have to have to be able to change those. So this is the mechanism that we can do that, and it's it's phenomenal. Brilliant. Yeah. How did you discover or find your way into the nutrition side? That's a funny question. Uh, so I have four children, uh -huh. and my my first practice was like a chiropractic obstetric practice. Okay. So I would adjust the pregnant women. I would help to breach babies. If a woman got stuck in labor, they'd call me and go in. I'd do an adjustment in the hospital. We'd have a baby in 15 minutes. Whoa. Yeah. I didn't know All that. except for my wife and one other lady. Every single time I went in, we had a baby in 15 minutes. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. That's cool. Well, you know, th th that was back in the day. And now things have kind of changed. Yes. And, you know, there's a little bit more regulation and yeah. control. So yeah. Yeah. I understand that. But... Um, we used the obstetrician for our first two ch children, and we also had a midwife in the background. Okay. But then by the time we got to our third child, we we're like, you know what? You know, we feel pretty comfortable. We're just going to have this baby at home. We're going to use a midwife. Yep. So um, it just so happens that we were looking for a new midwife, and the week before I got this phone call from this lady that said, um, I'm in labor. I just fell and the baby turned breach. Oh. And and she fell down her steps. Oh. I'm like, oh no. And I said, I said, okay, where are you? Now, granted, this is five o'clock on a Friday. We're in Fullerton and she's in Huntington Beach. Oh. I'm like, okay. There's like that's five million two humans. hours <laughs> to get there. It's not happening. So I said to her, I said, have you ever been adjusted? And she goes, yes. I'm like, beautiful. Who's your chiropractor? She goes, my husband. I'm like, oh my God, thank uh -huh. you. So I said, put him on the phone. And so I walked him through the process to turn the breach. And while I was on the phone with him, he actually was able to do it. And the, the baby turned. Wow. 
So it turns out this gal's a midwife. And so, you know, we had a lot of great communication that day and then the next day and after the birth and checking on her. And my my wife and I were looking for a new midwife. So my wife gets home from the gym and she's pregnant and she's a little freaked out. And I'm going, what's up? And she's like, I'm bleeding. Mm-mm. I'm like, uh. so do you know what? You know, there's there's a new midwife. I really like her. I think that you're going to dig her too. Let's yep. just call her. Let's call her. So we call her. And and I said, hey, you know what? You helped me. You know, or we work together. I would love for you to help my wife. Mm-hmm. We're looking for a new midwife. This was on a Thursday on her day off. I said, you know, she, she's got some spotting. And she's like, you know, maybe 15 weeks pregnant. And she's like, all right, just meet me in my office. So we drive down there. And... Pretty much that's all I told her. Okay. She greeted us, she greeted our wives, very kind, very pleasant. And she sits my wife down and she starts muscle testing. And just a little background, all the guys that did that while I was in school, oh, I pretty much mercilessly tortured them, <laughs> right? And made fun of them. And she's muscle testing. And I'm and she goes, Oh. She goes, she, she looks at her kind of puzzled. She goes, what did you do this morning? And my wife said, oh, I went to the gym. And she's like, oh. oh. She goes, you did something different than you normally do. And my wife's like, well, how'd you know that? Yeah, I was a, a different aerobics instructor teaching the class. And she's like, oh, that's it. And she goes back to muscle testing. And then she goes, oh, she goes, okay. She goes, well, what you did, you tore some of the little muscles down in the bottom of the uterus. She goes, this will take care of it. She goes, you just need to use this. It'll be done in two, three days. And I looked at her and go, how did you know that? And she goes, I muscle tested that. Like, duh. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And she's like, (laughs) she says, I I muscle tested that. And I'm like, what? Where did you learn that? Right, right. Next question. And she looks at me like I'm stupid. She goes, well, you learned it in school. And I go, well, I know where I learned it. I want to know where you learned it. And she goes, well, there's this foundation that, you know, I, I went and I took the courses. And yep. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. So I went home and I immediately called that uh, foundation. And I said, this is Dr. Cooper and I need to learn this. And I go, well, you know, problem is, so the class will start again and, and you know whenever January and here we're in like June or July and I go no no that's not gonna work right and I was very persistent but uh-huh. I was very kind uh-huh. Uh-huh. but um all the things that they offered was not the solution so finally the guy says listen all right I'll tell you what I will personally train you and take you through the course okay I'll come to your office every Wednesday at lunch and for two hours wow we will work and I will catch you up to the class and at the point I catch you up to the class, then you can jump into the jump into that. One. Well, he and I had so much fun that we not only went to the class, we passed through the class. We right. passed. We did year one, two, and three. Oh my gosh! I mean, we just we just skyrocketed <laughs> down the rabbit hole. You yeah, went. and um, and it was magical. Wow! And 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 what's really cool is you know when you look at all the research behind it and yep. the inter. Uh, reliability between professionals is so amazing, mm. but it's just this very neurologically intuitive way that I can communicate to you and your body and your brain without yep. you, you know, throwing any, anything at it. Yeah. It's and amazing. So, yeah. It's truly, truly amazing. So I knew at that, that I could handle these biochemical things. Gotcha. Right. That, that was then, okay. Got that part. So how you had said, there's these multimodal components yep. Yep. to concussion care. And I realized, okay, I've got the chiropractic part. Now we've got the neurological part. Now I've got the nutritional part. Now I had in the, you know, neuroemotional. the neuroemotional component. And then when I got all that research and all of it said exactly the same thing. Now I fine tune a lot of things because yep. like, oh, you know, now I got to give more yep. precedence to that. Yep. Um, but yeah, that, it was magical. Brilliant. And um you know, I can't. I cannot tell you, we've ever had a day that I've been disappointed. I mean, I've had literally three people in the last year that had a stroke, went to the emergency room, got him into the hospital, 
as soon as they were released from the hospital, the families brought them here and brought them here in the middle of an adjusting hour. So you know okay. what that's like. There's I like do. 30, 40 people yes. here. Yes. Right. So that's like throwing a hand grenade into the middle of the room. But every single one of those, I was able to resolve using this technique within maybe an hour or two. And, you know, like where left side of the body was completely non-functional, speech was slurred, articulation was poor, mm -hmm. to as good as you could imagine it to be after that kind of trauma within two hours. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. It's been amazing. Yeah. Right. And one didn't even speak English. Wow. She speaks Polish. So okay. that was that was crazy. Because I had to translate everything, too. Right, right. So, yeah. So, I, you know, I've, I have not been disappointed. Um, I was given an award by the top chiropractic group in the world. And I, I was just completely unexpected. I guess my wife knew we were in Cancun at this mastermind and meeting. Mm -hmm. And I was in shorts and a T-shirt. And she's like, hey, you know, you're going back to going to the meeting this morning. I said, yeah. She said, um, don't you want to, don't you put on a nice shirt? I'm like, no, you know, we're in Cancun. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. We're in Cabo. Right. We're in Cabo. Yeah, I just want to be relaxed. She's like, you know, normally you wear like at least like a dressy, you know, short sleeve shirt. I'm like, yeah, I just feel like a t-shirt today. She's like, okay. Well, clearly she knew something I didn't know. <laughs> she was trying. To yes. Up. <laughs> so I've realized that whenever my wife says that, go do it. That's it. Don't ask. That's right. You know, yes. so yeah, particularly for men in clothing. Yeah, so I mean, it's kind of sitting behind you on the counter, but you know, oh, brilliant, yeah, and and you know, I don't tell anybody that I was given the award as the top doctor of the year. Yeah, but you know, that's a pretty huge honor when you think that that's pretty cool. Yeah, that you know, this is the top one percent, and they chose me. Yeah, you know, to be the representative, and that's that. That's a pretty elite. That's awesome thing. So yeah, yeah, I've been very very thankful for you know, all the gifts that have come along with it. But nice. but there's there's definitely a responsibility. Yep. Right? And yep. that that I'm not opposed to. Nice. You know. Yep. Uh, I'm 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 listening to uh Spider Man <clears throat> in my head right now with Uncle Ben, uh with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. We're we're a, you know, every superhero in my house movies right now with a seventeen and eleven year old. Yeah. We're right in the thick of it. So but yeah. that's really, really, really cool. Um, you know, my experience here has been amazing. Um, didn't know what to expect, but I trust Kathy. And so yeah. when I was like, All right, I'm in and when we sat down for the nutrition portion and you started muscle testing, right away I knew I was like, Okay, this is I'm in the hands of a master. Thank you. Because for those of you who don't know about muscle testing and the work, like go read power versus force by Dr. David Hawkins. Yep. That will give you a primer as to what it is, the research behind it, the power that it possesses yeah. in ob objectively and efficiently identifying truth about yep. a situation and the, you know, applying that in a health setting, like, I want to do, I want to learn muscle testing for my dog, Chewy, for his benefit. And here's why yeah. I know that when we both meet again up at the pearly gates, all the weird things that Chewy's been suffering from, yeah. he's going to be like, it was this, right. and he's going to say, and I was, I know, buddy, I couldn't understand. I'm so sorry, you know, but I, but the concept behind, you know, being able to just test for things, whether it's this or it's not this or it's this or how much of this, and then being able to calibrate and quantify yeah. with such specificity, it's, I mean, it's such a phenomenal diagnostic and treatment tool for any healer, but right. it, it can be used in all kinds of, you know, applications. Absolutely. But I was grateful that I had been exposed to it many years prior, so it wasn't my, my first time, because that East Coast cynic in me would have been like, Pfft. But that's why I spend the time to kind of explain the yeah. neurology to it yes. so that you, even if this, if you've had it done before, it doesn't matter to me. I'm still going to explain it to yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I'm just going to break down the neurology so you kind of understand like, you know, the brain can, can perceive these frequencies and it's put in the same, you know, spinal pathway is, you know, temperature. So yep. you, know, you can tell temperature instantaneously when you put your hand in water, how's it, you can hold something and your brain can immediately know. Yep. And, but, but what I told you in the beginning and the next thing I'm going to write up like on the walls where you, you might see where our miracles are expected is written above us. I'm going to write in the absence of understanding neurology, 
everything looks like magic. Yes, yes. My wife and I joke about this all the time because we'll say, we'll talk about something because as a biohacker, you know, yeah. I, where I'm always being exposed to new things. And, and my wife's more, um, what's the last? She's less suggestible than me. So she's more skeptical of things. So she'll, she'll always ask, how did that work? Or, yeah. well, and, and I'll be like, I don't know. And then we'll joke. One of us will say, it's magic. And the other one will go, it's science. Yeah, exactly. And to those who don't understand the science, it's magic. Yeah. Until you explain it and then right. it becomes science. Right. So, you know, whatever you want to call it, that stuff works. Right. Um, and I, it was pretty fascinating. So we talked really quickly about the move in the pen, um, but the listeners won't know what we were talking about right there. Mm -hmm. I want to close that loop really quickly and describe that what you did that day or and what Dr. Ange did with me that day. No, Dr. Ange is one of our associates. Yep. She's, so she's the one who did this technique she, on yeah, me. She worked on Tim. Yep. And she is brilliant. Yeah. She is brilliant. Yeah. She's awesome. Yeah. And so she was holding a laser, mm -hmm. but a, there's a specific type of laser. Not all lasers are created equal. Right. Right. So this is very specifically a... Well, this is an, the one we used on you as an LED version. Okay. So a provider that has a laser can do this technique as long as they can turn it down. Gotcha. Because if we go too strong, right? Too too strong's dangerous. Yeah, I mean it's not going to hurt you, but okay. it's going to like cause a headache. Okay. So if we kind of tone it down, got it. Yeah, you know, that's that's far more tolerable. Gotcha. So what she was doing was she was actually stimulating neuroplasticity Yep. because the data and the research behind the laser says that when that light hits the cell, yep. it immediately potentiates the cell. Okay. What does that mean? It yeah. means like if you took a battery that was discharged and you put it into a battery charger, it charges this one and then it charges this one and then it charges this one and then it charges that one. Okay. Right. And when we hit that light on the cell, it recharges that one. And then every one in connection to it now Start just immediately flooding. heals. Oh, right. Got it. So, well, it, it heals because now we've turned the power back on. Gotcha. Right. So, yep. so we think of all this like your cell phone. You know, if your cell phone died and you had no way of charging it. Right. Right. It's got no ability to help you. But, yep. you know, with a charge, it's got all these amazing possibilities. Yes. Right. So kind of that same idea. So okay. what we did is we turned that power on. But what she was doing was she was functionally having you do an activity that we saw and measured a deficit in. Yep. And then she was interacting with the part of the brain where we know that that nerve pathway, that cranial nerve pathway goes through. Okay. So part of the training we do with new doctors or, you know, doctors that you know, join our, 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 um, our quest you know, to save the world's brains is to actually reteach them. Like, here's where that pathway is. Gotcha. And to know exactly where that is. Okay. Right. So there's really, there. It it's all neurology, but it's, you know, it kind of may look a little haphazard, but there's just nothing haphazard. To what it. was amazing for me was how fast uh, it turned that, like it turned things back on because as she's moving, you know, the pen and I'm tracking it with my, and it would like, I would cover one eye and I would track it and I could feel this like fatigue yeah. in my eye. Now I'm walking around, I'm doing my activities of daily living. I don't really think about that kind of thing. But no. when she isolated it, it was suddenly glaring. Yeah. And it was like, oh. And, and one of the great quotes from my trainer, Kyle Valerie, is uh, that athletes are the world's greatest compensators. Oh, totally. That, that is a good, good, a great quote. That is a great quote. And so like <clears throat> there I go through my day compensating for whatever weakness I have going on. Right. And it doesn't take much to kind of spot, you know, the, the weakness if you know what to look for. So just by closing the eye and trying to do a simple task, I could feel. Uh, uh, uh. Right. And then we did the technique with the LED and within a few minutes. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Whoop. I, I could perceive the difference yeah. right away myself. And I just was like, that was so efficient. That's amazing. Yeah. Right. Now, I don't want to throw shade on all neurologists, but by comparison, when I 
booked my uh, first eval with a neurologist after mm-hmm. this head injury because the doctor says go to right. the neurologist. Okay, follow over here. The med student who was taking my intake said, so what is it you expect from us? And I said, I expect you know things I don't and that you're going to give me some treatments to make heal my brain. The neurologist gets on and he says, well, the best treatment is don't have another concussion. <laughs> And I said, I just paid you to say that. Like, are you kidding? Like, yeah. I knew that already. Right. Tell me something I don't already know. That's your job. Right. He offered me nothing by comparison. And right. in coming here, like the amount of things that we were able to do and the amount of impact that it's had, like the improvement I've had has been so dramatic that it almost left me with a little bit of imposter syndrome. Like, did I fake it? Did I, did it? Did I make this up? Like, because I feel so much better, so much quicker than so many times before. Yeah. But I've done things differently than I've done before. And if you want a different result, do something different. You got to do something different. Absolutely. So, you know, in addressing that, there's some people that want to go see a neurologist and I'm not opposed to that. Yep. Right. If that's what you feel like you need to do, you're going to go do it. But what I'm going to ask you to do is to bring me the data that they discover, right? you know, and then let's you and I look at that together and let's then determine what is the best course of action. But what you have to understand in research, you know, the, the question I always get is why me and why now? Mm. Right. Well, now, because there is an epidemic. Yeah. And the treatment that's out there is antiquated. Yep. And it's dangerous. And mm. it's leading people to have these problems that are leading lasting weeks, months, years, mm-hmm. and they could be physical problems, but they could be mental problems. It could be emotional problems. It could be psychological problems. Mm-hmm. Like when we look at the military. Yeah. When one of oh. those guys kills themselves, dude, they don't kill just themselves. They take the whole family yep. with them. Yep. When you're talking about 22 a day, yep. right. That is That's unacceptable. Exactly. That is exactly. an epidemic. And I can tell you like, as someone like I was having those thoughts for the first seven weeks. And I never, I mean, never had those thoughts right. before the injury. And then suddenly I was imagining the world without me and that my family would be better off without me. My wife must be so tired of this. Everybody, I should just, there's no point. And I was having these thoughts and then I started being like, wait, I don't have these thoughts. Yeah. Right. Wait this a minute. Me. And then I, I knew enough of how to like deal with it, but I was like, but I don't have these thoughts in the first place. It's not about me coming up with a strategy for dealing with them right i'm having them in the first place that's a right that's a symptom of the injury exactly and i want to get healthy as soon as possible because like the jim mcmahon story from the the the, the bears qb yeah. like he said it he's you know i was like i'm i get it i know why people off themselves now yep. you know i wanted to do the same thing after years of this and right being offered no real solutions so it's imperative that your work and these techniques are exposed to more people because the other thing that blew me away when uh, I got number 12 and I went to treatment at the Amen Clinics, I went to a, 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 a lecture there on concussions. Yeah. Daniel Amen's an amazing guy. They are, you know, definitely pioneers in many ways right. over there. And the lecturer said there's 100 people in the room and the, and the person said, okay, how many people in the room have had a concussion? Mm-hmm. About... I don't know, 10 or 12 people raised their hand. Not a lot. And then the lecturer said, all right, all right, let me ask this question. Like, let me ask you again. How many people in the room have had their bell rung? Like right. 85% of the room raised their hand. And, and she said, congratulations, you've had a concussion. And you could, like you could, right. the inspiration of air. Everyone's like, what? And she was like, yeah, you know, we nine out of 10 don't involve a loss of consciousness. And they're cumulative. And we live in a culture that, you know, doesn't take it seriously. Right. That's it. And on top of that, I'll throw another thing in there. Uh, it was Dr. Ange that actually said this, but she, she said something that to me was brilliant and, and was right on the money. And she said, you know, an untreated head injury is still an untreated head injury. You know, so when you've had this concussion, it doesn't matter if it was two yes. weeks ago, three weeks ago, if it yes. was six months ago, yes. it was 66 years ago. That's right. If if that has not been treated uh, treated and rectified, it's still there. It's still there. That's exactly true. And it's that's a hundred percent. So one day, 
This this was cool. So you know, in this office where we're sitting, we have four adjusting tables. Yep. Um, Doctor Moses was working on a seventeen year old. All right. Uh, I was working on an eight year old. Um, this this was an interesting story. He was on the playground. Okay. Um, somebody kicked the ball. The ball hit him. Didn't hit him in the head. Right. Hit him in, like in the body in the torso. Uh huh. <clears throat> wasn't significantly impactful yep he that was the early recess at lunchtime tried to eat and realized he couldn't swallow and so he vomited his lunch Ooh. and then he tried to drink and he couldn't swallow and he vomited his lunch. well so now he's vomiting so of course the teacher or the aide takes him to the, the, the nurse to the nurse and to the office and calls the parent and the mom freaks out and she's like i'm bringing him straight over and um so I started evaluating him, and it was like, oh, this this is a concussion. Wow. And it, and it wasn't even a, a, yeah. a, a trauma. It wasn't even a significant trauma. That's right. It was enough to torque That's right, it. and get that brain to slap. Yep. So it was interesting because he lost his ability to swallow, but where the, the nuclei, if you remember that from school, like the brain of – that nerve that helps us, you know, swallow the uh -huh. vagus nerve. Uh -huh. um, where that's located, also number eight, number nine, number ten, number twelve. Although those are in kind of that same area. Okay. Well, number eight is the auditory nerve. Okay. So I start testing his hearing, and he couldn't hear out of his side. No kidding. Yeah, and it's the mom's like, I, I'm like, you know, he's using a tune for it. Yep. He's like, yeah, I totally hear that. Nope, not at all. Strike it, put it on top of its head for bone conduction. Yep. Oh, totally hear it here. Can't hear it there. Wow. Right? So I, the mom, like, all of a sudden gets, like, really kind of flush. Yeah. And I looked at her and go, what's up? She goes, I was talking to him, and I thought he was ignoring me. So I scolded him Ooh. before he walked in here. Right, so the boy got in trouble. Parent of the year award. Because exactly, you know, she's like, I've all feel been there. So bad. Yeah, we've all been there. Exactly. So, but the the cool part was, I was fixing the eight year old. Uh, Doctor Moses, our associate, was fixing a nineteen year old, and Doctor Ange, at the exact same time, was fixing a lady that's sixty eight years old. Wow. That had her injury uh, at eighteen years old on the skiing team. Because, because, and her symptom was bowel dysregulation. She's Dr. Cooper. I only poop every three days. Oh. I'm like, how long has that been going on? Since college, right? Wow. When was your concussion? Oh, I had a concussion my senior year in high school on the ski team. I, you know, wiped out on the skis. Oh, yeah. I'm like, that's one of mine. We're doing it. There you go. Yeah. And so it was really cool. But that was a great example that an untreated head injury is still an untreated head injury. Yep. And it doesn't matter nope. that it was like 50 years ago. Nope, doesn't matter. This isn't a really important thing because there's a myth out there in our culture that time heals all <clears> wounds. <throat> yeah. And it's just not true. No. Uh, I do a lot of work in grief, and it doesn't work in that world. No. Nope. And it doesn't work in head injuries. No. No. Nope. No, there is a time that's required once we put the solution it together. It takes time to heal wounds. I agree. agree. If you, well, but that's when you're actually doing the work, like right. the, the active healing, but just by itself. Right. Not everything. I mean, there are things on us that are self-healing. Yes, yeah. we can. But the point is we can't say that about everything. And we right. want to notice that there are certain situations that that doesn't apply. And yeah. we have to pay attention to that because we could be walking around suffering. Yep. But now we've just been so normalized to it, and we don't even know that, again, connecting the dots. Right. So you used the word myth. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And I think that it would be really cool to help empower the people that listen to your podcast. Yeah. So let's talk about the myths okay. about concussion. That's a great idea. Isn't that a great idea? Yes. Every once in a while, I have a great you had, idea. That's a great idea. That's one Thank of you. Good, yeah, well All right. Done, well so um, let's talk about the myths. Okay. What, what, so when a person's had a concussion, what is one of the things that people have been told or understand that you're not allowed to allow that person to do? Well, the first thing I'm thinking is like they tell you, like, don't look at any screens, go in a cold, quiet, dark room, and like, don't do any exercise. 
That's all true, and that's a myth. And but that's that's not the but that's big not one. the one you're that, thinking. That's of. the number three. All right, we'll get to that one. Right. What's this one? Don't fall. Don't fall again. Well, don't fall asleep. Oh, 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 really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. right. Yes, I have heard that. Right. So who out yeah, there? Yeah. Whatever you do, like, don't fall yeah, asleep. Don't, don't fall asleep. Okay. Yes. Right. That's an old one. That's an old one, yeah. and that's the biggest myth in the world. So yeah. you know, the thing is, as long as we don't have a brain bleed. Which the truth is, is that in most of the cases, really if you go to the ER and they're going to do a CT scan, they're going to rule that it. out. Yeah. Right. I've been there twice. You're, you're right. Yeah. Your body heals in sleep. Yeah. So yes. that whole idea of sleep is dangerous. That's a myth. Oh, my God. Don't heal. Right. <laughs> Number two. So let's let's follow the scenario. Okay. Right. So uh, let's say it's a high school age athlete. Uh, they're a pickleball player, and they end up having this concussion, um, and so they're sent to the hospital. Okay. And typically, number one, they're going to do a CT scan. Yes. Right? And let's say the CT scan proves that, you know, coast is clear. Yep. No brain bleed. Yep. You know, everything's great. Yep. So this person still feels woozy, still feels a headache. What do you think, or what's your experience what is the doctor going to recommend or prescribe to them? Oh, this, by the way, is myth number two. M myth number two. Well, um, I've been pre just prescribed, you know, pain meds. Right. Well, specifically, what pain med are you? Uh, I've been well. The one that I was most recently prescribed is e either Tylenol for pain and or Norco, which is Tylenol with right uh, narcotic right opioid. Whichever one it is, hydrocodone, oxycodone, I can't remember. Right. Yeah. So, Tylenol. Tylenol. So, as soon as Acetaminophen. You, acetaminophen. Number two biggest myth. Okay. Why is Tylenol so dangerous in this situation? Because, ty so, when you dude, have I'm this just injury. I'm so scared right now because I have eaten so much Tylenol. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're gonna kill. Yeah, me. You're gonna scare me right now. All, Here we go. All of the. Uh, I know it's really bad for my liver. It's terrible for your liver, but there's more important con concept to this. Okay. Number one, when there's a head injury like this, the blood-brain barrier is what tears. Okay. Yes. It's ripped. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, like, if you fell and you you know ripped your your pants. Yep. Right. There is now a, a, a an a injury hole, like a, a hole in, in your barrier. pants. Yeah. Right. Got it. Now, Wait, in our bodies, we will actually rebuild and we will heal that blood brain barrier yep. and the damage made to it. But we need a nutrient in our diet called glutathione. Yes. Glutathione heals the blood brain barrier. So now let me ask you a question. What does Tylenol or acetaminophen inhibit? I don't know. Glutathione uptake. <laughs> Awesome. The most dangerous thing you could do is take Tylenol. It's like literally just keeping the barrier open. Exactly. So the it's longer like, oh, the oh, barrier. Hold it open. Hold it open. Have more Tylenol. Hold it open. Right. So the more the barrier stays open, yeah. the more the toxicities that are already present in the body Can are going to go into the brain. They're yep. going to go deeper and deeper and deeper in the brain. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> so myth number one is don't let those people sleep. Myth number two Take Tylenol. I ate so, so now, much Tylenol this time around. Oh, you're, you're killing crazy, me. man. Well, so you know, you, I was just, to, I didn't know. You want to hear something cool? I didn't know. So in our house, you know, we had six kids. We had a big house. We have um, five bathrooms. Okay. Would you believe we don't have one medicine cabinet in our home? Wow. Now we have five mirrored bathroom cabinets. Yes. And I have a wife and daughter, so they're filled with all sorts <laughs> of crazy things. But we do not have one pill. We don't have one potion. We don't what? have one lotion. We have nothing like that wow. in my home. Wow. Okay. Right? Because that would absolutely not fit the paradigm. That doesn't make so sense. So now, yeah. what would the guy that thinks naturally, what would he turn to? Thinks naturally. Uh, well, what whatever stimulates glutathione uptake? Right, which is dark green leafy vegetables. Okay. Okay? But yep. then the other thing is, is that if there's pain, there's a headache, there's inflammation. We still yep. have to get rid of the inflammation. Our best choice is probably turmeric. Okay. Right. We could use hemp oil as well, which okay. is a CBD product. Yep. We don't want any THC. Nope. Right. Nope. But uh, now, now turmeric, you know, you, you can do turmeric as food. You can do it as tea. But we found out that if we mix it with black pepper, it becomes more effective. Right. Right. However, if we mix it with fenugreek. Okay. 
it becomes 24.8 times stronger. That's very important because the data that I've, most recent data I read on turmeric was that the amounts that you need for a human body for it to be really effective. Right. Because a lot of the lab studies are with rats right. and mice. And so when they look at how much they gave a mouse and they're like, yeah, but the mass of the mouse's brain and the masses of the mouse's right. body versus if we blew that up to a human, right. then we're going to need to consume a lot. So like, it was like ridiculous dose, like a kilogram. You know what I mean? It was right. just something unbelievable. So Right. So fenugreek, that's why, right. So when you add fenugreek and you make it. that, that's yeah, really smart. the bioavailability, yes. like almost 20 times, five times stronger. That makes sense to me. That's, that's the key. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. So, so that, that would be, so then the last thing is the last big myth and the danger is to go home. Right. Go in a dark room. Yep. Right. Um, stay off your screen. Right. Right, all of those kind of things, and and the, the the danger exists in that there is passive activities that need to be done very specifically, like a chiropractic adjustment uh -huh. that's going to allow that restore restoration of fluid flow, right. the cerebral spinal CSF. fluid, right, yeah. and that's instantly going to do it. So that just stay home, right? Total myth, right? Right. So the three total myths. Don't sleep, take Tylenol, don't do anything. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Completely wrong. And it's crazy because when I do these these educational workshops with doctors, yeah. I ask them, okay, so based on a concussion, what should be the first thing you would expect? Raise your hand. And all of them say the exact, well, don't let them sleep. Yeah. yeah make sure they're taking Tylenol. Oh, yeah. Make, right. And then when I lay out all the research and the data, they're like, oh, my God. Yeah. But that's also why, you know, like you said it yourself, your experience is well, the world just light years ahead of everybody else. And, yep. And it's true. Yep. That's just. That's it. It's it's why they call it a practice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because right? it's not a perfect. Madison is a practice. Yeah. And, and, and as a practitioner, I constantly wrestle with the limits of my knowledge. Yeah. You know, and when you know better, you have the chance to do better. Yeah. It doesn't guarantee it, but at least you have a shot at it. And so why, like. One of the smartest things, I think, regardless of anybody's approach is like what I love about being a, a professional is I'm required to do continuing ed units to maintain my board certification. Yeah. Because it's con the, the, the knowledge base is constantly updating. Right. Right. And if I was to just sit back and rely on what we knew 15 yeah. years ago. Right. That's old news. Right. Yeah. And a lot of it's been proved like just from a stretching perspective, when we were young guns, we were told static stretch while you're cold is the way to do it. And right. Now we know that data has been updated to be like, oh, whoops, we got that wrong. Yeah, that's opposite. Sorry. Right. So it's really important for those of us who are being exposed to the latest to share it. Yeah. I have a, a, a colleague who is a he has a second phd in neuroscience because he wanted to go when he was a student he could be around what was being researched while it was being researched when he became a professional he realized he was only reading what was published by the time it was published it was old news right so he went back to school just to stay a student so that he could have access to all the research as it was happening yeah. and i was like that's genius in a really weird way yeah, exactly <laughs> glad you have unlimited income cuz right. those are some expensive credits exactly but he was you know he wanted to be up on the latest thing and and this was 2016, and he was talking about cardiac neuroscience right. and that they were measuring thought in the heart and measuring thought in the gut. Oh, and it's a million times faster than thought in the brain. We have three centers of thought. The data is fascinating. And we're all sitting there like, uh, <laughs> what? Right? But it's important for us all on our journey to remember that what we thought was up for a long time, yeah. science may find out was down. Yeah, exactly. And vice versa, right? So we have to be willing to constantly be right. consuming this and, and leading us to better outcomes. And, and, and you know, the, the, the challenge that we have right now in coming through what's happened to our society worldwide recently is that <clears throat> the trust in medical science is as low as it's ever been. It's as low as... And so job number one is always regain trust yeah. and establish that, Yep. you know? And yep. so 
that's why, you know, I, I'm never opposed to somebody having an oppositional thought to me. Right. Right. Like throw it on. Let's, let's work that through. And, yep. You know, and I got no issue with that. Yeah. Right. Yep. But, you know, I'm definitely designed in my mind as a strategic person that I'm going to figure out what the truth is. Yep. So I know, Yep. you know, and I can move forward with that. Yeah. So brilliant. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been great. And I have a sense like if we had unlimited time, we'd, we'd just keep talking till the two of us have cotton mouth and a exactly. sore throat. So we're going to wrap it up. Um, where can people find you and your clinic online? Uh, two places. Number one, you can go to Cooperstown Cairo. So Cooperstown, like the baseball yep. Hall of Fame, Cairo, C-H-R-O dot com. Yep. Um, and that's where you can see all of our miracles, all of those kinds of things. Yep. Um, and, uh, you can, you know, schedule as a patient or you can, uh, you know, make a call also the concussion CPR. Now concussion CPR, the website is concussion dot solutions. Okay. Oh, right? that's cool. Yeah. Laura? Not, not dot com. Not right. Just dot concussion dot, dot solutions. solutions. Right. Okay. And then, and again, you know, you can kind of book in a call and, you know, if you're a provider or if you are a, uh, a patient, mm -hmm. um, and like I say, not. You know, we're one of the places that I would say we probably get um, maybe three fly-ins a month. Yeah. You know, so yeah. people just, just, you know. That was my experience down at Damon. you know, like, oh, where are you from? You know, and they would, right. same thing, because when you find a center of excellence, you're willing to go. Yeah. And you yeah. clearly are one of those centers of excellence. Yeah. So glad I'm here. Yeah, me too. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Yeah, and... I'm I'm having a lot of fun. That's the other thing. We always have to have fun. So yeah, yeah. That's that's job Keep number one. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us on Pickleball Recovery. Dude, I appreciate it. Woo thanks so much for listening. Did you know there's one place on the web for all your recovery needs? It's at www.pickleballrecovery.com. You'll find all the products I personally use and recommend, along with exclusive discounts on many of them as well as my blog where I help you make sense out of all the different products and practices out there to keep you moving and feeling better so you play better. After all, your body is the most expensive piece of equipment you own. Also, do you want to know the number one mistake picklers make that leads to increased pain, soreness, stiffness, and injury? Just head over to pickleballrecovery.com and download my free guide to playing with less pain and more enjoyment. Listen, pickleball makes us feel young at heart, but not young in body. So go download my free guide at www.pickleballrecovery.com. See you next time.